grab the meeting notes real quick. And while I'm doing that, I might as well post that in the chat as well. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. In that case, let me find my note, um, find my place. All right then, welcome all to March 1st, Cooper Community Meeting. I am your host, Kat Morgan. Thank you all for joining. Um, as always, if everyone can make sure they take a moment and log their attendance, that would, is always appreciated. Let's see if I can get my Bluetooth keyboard on. There we go. All right, it looks like items are being added to our agenda today. So um, thank you all for that. While the agenda is filled out and attendance is logged, do we have anyone new on the call who would like to introduce themselves? It's always nice to be able to say hello to new faces and welcome you. All right, then. We have a few things dropping on open floor. Um, anyone is welcome to add things to agenda notes or open floor as we speak. If we missed your item, I will be watching to try and make sure that we cut circle back around to it. Before we dive into the agenda items, I always like to call out, of course. Um, feel free to add any pull requests, mailing list items, or bugs that you would like special attention paid to. If you feel something that is uh, is being neglected that would benefit from conversation today, um, that is open to all. If you don't have right access to the agenda notes, all you need to do is um, join the Kubert Google group, and then make sure you log into the document with that same account that is uh, joined to the Google group, and you should have everything you need to add items uh, at will. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this first item on the open floor. Um, would anyone I, like to speak to this? Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Perfect. So this PR is um, a fix for a, a bug that we run into with, with one of our customers. Um, and essentially, there are, uh, they have a namespace that has a limit range in there. And the limit range has a, a request to limit ratio. Um, currently, and it's breaking a disk hot plug. Um, the disk hot plug a container has a request to limit ratio of, I think it's 40, something like that. Um, and their limit ratio is lower than that. Um, the uh, fix for this is essentially making the um, request to limit ratio one uh, in the actual PR. Um, the consequence of this is, is that a the hot plug uh, attachment pod will use or it will reserve a little more memory and it will reserve a little more CPU. And I just wanted to bring this up and see if anybody is is you know really opposed to this. Um, it it's just a single container per VM that does hot plug. If you don't do, use the disk hot plugging, it this will not affect you at all. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring this up uh, and to see if anybody had any like strong opposition to it. Um, Hi, Alex. I, I think I don't have any objection, but uh, as far as I know, the the container disk or how do we call it, 
We don't really need it for the hot plug. We could just bind some process, arbitrary process to some Unix socket, and that should be it, right? So maybe as an improvement, we can have a look on making actually the process which would be more predictable on the memory usage. Does it sound good? Right, yes, yes. I, I, I actually, um, I, I do want to do a follow-up PR to this where you can essentially set your request and limits um, in the Kubert CR, um, and then the container will use that instead of having it hard-coded so you can sort of play with it because I, I can see a, a use case where for some people um, the one-to-one -one ratio is a little too much and maybe they want something else. So having it uh, configurable would be better. Um, but that's, you know, adding a new API and there's a whole bunch of extra stuff related to this and, and it's sort of a, an urgent issue, so. But if we can, if we can get uh, rid of the whole uh, part of this, we can actually reduce the amount of memory that we need. Uh, but again, it, it's, I think it's like the, the, the limit is like 80 megabytes you know, compared to probably gigabytes on the actual VM, you know, it, it should not, you know, hurt that much. Uh, I just wanted to bring it up. That's all, and, and see if anybody was like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, this is terrible. Um, I, I don't think it's terrible. It's, it's not optimal, and we can improve it. But um, for now, I think it's, it's okay. So, did I understand correctly that? Uh, we could get rid of the container disk container. This is hot plug, not container disk. Um, so there, there's a, a process that runs in the a pod that allows the vert handler to find, uh, sorry, yeah, vert handler to find the attachment pod so it can then find the actual uh, volume so it can then do some magic to bind mount it into the vert launcher pod. Um, and we can probably replace that process with something that uses less memory and then we can reduce the limit and uh, make it better from that perspective. I think that's what you were saying, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, well, I'm I'm not hearing anybody like go nuts about this, so I I, I think it, it's not a huge deal. I just wanted to bring it up. That's all. No worries. Cool. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. All right. Then. Thank you. It looks like next next we have something from Alicia. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. Um. So. This is actually one thing I would like the community can help. So we have the good first issue label, but actually there are no current open issue that has this label. And um, yeah, yeah, I mean, right now, I don't know if you have noticed, but in uh, Kubert of some some uh, people has joined and those are students um, that would like to contribute to GSOC. So um, Kubert has been accepted uh, as part of GSOC program. Um, however, we don't have issues that new contributor can pick. Um, so this is in context of GSOC, but generally it, it will probably facilitate if you could start to label issues um, with this uh, with this label. For example, Andrew was also asking a couple of months ago for contrib fest for KubeCon. So yeah, if you have a feature that you think it's a pretty easy for newcomers, but you don't have time to work on, maybe just put this, this label. Okay. Yeah, I would just add to the only problem which I notice is that we actually cannot uh, uh, label the issues. So if we have a little Daniel or Brian on the call, do you yeah. know what could be wrong? 
because as far as I know, only the author of the issue can label them. Yeah. Either, yeah. <laughs> either the author of the issue or somebody who is a reviewer or maintainer is allowed to label it. And that's my guess is there are these issues that are being raised and people can't put that label on it. Um, well, there, you know, they've got permission to do so. Not sure if isn't a pro have the comment for that. Yes, yes, it does. And I checked the configuration, it looks good to me, but I would really appreciate it if somebody had a look, second look. I'm not a maintainer, so I cannot label the issue. I found a couple that could sweet, but um, yeah. Anyway, in January, if you can, if you can think next time you open an issue, if it's a good uh, first issue, please add the label. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set up next week's template and um, add an item to check that we've followed through on that, make sure that we're not letting that fall behind and then scrambling at the last minute. Sorry for um, being late on, on this one. Um, if you just could send me probably the list of issues, I'm going to label them directly. If that helps somehow so that you have something. And then I'm also going to look into what is wrong with the configuration of the labeling. Yeah, I'll send you the two, three I found. Yeah, please. Or I'm not sure, send it directly or to Kubitev. It's any, anyway, it's fine. Yeah, uh, maybe if any of you has other idea for issues, uh, you could add to the list. Uh, yeah, that, that would then probably, um, uh, facilitate Kubitev would be the first, first uh, yeah, idea yeah. that I would have something. So just open the discussion on uh, Kubitev. Yeah, and then I'm uh, trying to take care of the labeling then. Yeah, we'll do it. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Danny. Okay. Thank you. That'll be helpful. All right. And then it looks like we have an in place pub vertical scaling feature merge. Uh, do you want to speak to it? Yeah, I'm just uh, happy to announce that Kubernetes has this feature merged. I hope it will get into 1.27. Okay. So for now, it will be possible to. Um, resize ports without restarting of them. I think this is a uh, nice uh, idea to start working about implementing uh, CPU and memory hot plugging or uh, return back the memory ballooning. And I was thinking um, about the base is about the best option for doing this. I made a small research. Uh, this is not uh, published yet. I will write it on some issue, I guess. Uh, there are a few methods how we can uh, do that from the lead beard side. Uh, but the first question I would like to know, do you know if our lead beard controlling C groups somehow, or is it totally dedicated um, to the Kubernetes delegate? Not yet. Not in our case. So for us, Libbird is completely blind from the C group perspective. Okay, so we don't have to change shares because Kubernetes will do that instead of us. But we have to think about uh, managing the threads and the available memory size for the virtual machine. I found that uh, there is some option to specify maximum amount of size. And there were also memory ballooning device, uh, which was disabled in 1.4, sorry, 0 0.49 version of Qbeard. Yeah. I'm thinking about returning it back because it will it would allow to scale uh, the virtual machine uh, easily just by running the system single call, like virsh set mem size, and it will size size it automatically. So I think we'd have the device, we just don't use the part where you balloon the memory, uh, memory of the guest. Uh, but actually, I was 
speaking with some developers from QMO, and I think there is a better way to uh, to hot plug the memory. So I can share it with you after the call if you are interested. Yeah, it would be nice. Could you please uh, put the link into the document? Yeah, I will try to uh, find it first. Thank you. Uh, and about the CPU, it's very simple. The same thing, we can specify amount of uh, available cores for extending. Not actually cores, but threads. And we can manage these threads by the simple command we set CPU and the amount of cores. Uh, and the next question I would like to ask is uh, that I found that live resizing of the volumes is not working right now. Uh, and I was thinking about the best way of implementing it. Um, were there any ideas or is it expected behavior or should I just fix it, it as I thinking the best way? <laughs> um, that should be working. Really? Yeah. Did you enable the feature gate? It's no. Oh, there is yeah. there is yeah. feature gate. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, check the docs uh, in the docs directory. There should be a, a document. Um, yeah. Let, let, let me find it. I, I will put it in the. But yeah, Thank the, you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we should we should put that more in a more. Uh, mm, visible place because it's always coming up this question about yeah you're not the you're not the first one asking yeah yeah okay good got it and does it works both for block volumes and file system volumes yeah it should it should work sure. amazing okay um that's actually everything i wanted to ask <laughs> i have nothing to speak now all right, we can go ahead. Cool, thank you. Um, so, so vertical scaling and then your live resizing of volumes. Uh, we just talked about, and uh, we just yeah. spoke about that. Just wanted to make sure we weren't still lacking any of that all right then um looks like guest kernel update topic uh dewey if you want to speak to that yes sorry evidently i muted myself again <laughs> um can you hear me okay loud and clear okay yeah perfect um so i know that we're not um like really into confidential stuff yet as far as you know confidential containers and whatnot through libvirt i know that we've recently got started using you know legacy scd and scdes but i just wanted to bring it to the attention of people here um there have been a couple of um guest kernel uh so 519 through 6.1 some uh bugs that were found um not major bugs but just with uh surrounding the firmware error as well as some of the, uh, there was a, a slight ABI breakage for in re released in 6.1 and it's being worked on right now to be backported and fixed. So I just wanted to make sure that someone was playing around with it, that they're aware of it and that we are aware of it as well. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'm still slightly distracted getting a couple of the bugs um, listed real quick since I don't have screen sharing today. Let's see. Okay. Um, there was one more question that was posted from the chat, Lubo. Yes. I uh, just saw a question in the chat, so I could pass it. Um, as far as I know, we don't really have some upstream documentation on this one, but please feel free to correct me. 
Yeah, so it looks like the question is, do we have Qbert limitations um, at known uh, like that are known at scale for deployments documented anywhere? And I, I I don't believe so, but again, someone else can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Well, we have a few known large scale you know, deployments, uh, NVIDIA's uh, GeForce Now uh, platform is running Qbert at large scale and uh, CoreWeave um is is running at a, I think they said like five thousand VM, something like that. Uh, so we, we have some known. I don't think we have a you know documentation anywhere. So and do you know if there have been any limitations that have been run into uh running at that scale or has it seemed to work okay for them? Uh I do not know if they had any issues. Uh um, so, so if I may, if I may expand on the question, is did they talk about it um, in a conference, or is this yes. just from a, from a? No, both both Nvidia and, and CoreWeave have done uh, presentations for uh, Kubert on the Kubert Summit, and um, maybe other conferences that I not, don't know about. We also have this zig scale. Um, this might be a really good talk up to, uh, or item to bring up on their community meeting. All right, thank you. Sure. If you uh, if you see any of those recordings, I'm gonna try and find them. Please let me know in the chat or anything like that. Thank you. And then um, maybe watch the uh, announcement for KubeFertCon um, when that gets published. I can't remember off the top of my head if we have like hyperscale um, talks coming up, but I know we have uh, some coming up that do have to do with scale, which might be um, helpful to audiences that, that matters to, of course. And uh, so it looks like it's also it's gonna be virtual again? Yes, it is. All right, perfect, thanks. All right, then in that case, um, thank you for grabbing yeah. the Zoom chat top stuff. Yes. I'd like to, can I? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just happy to announce um, the new stable version of Deck House, our distribution, Kubernetes distribution, where we edit uh, the kubevirt based virtualization and implemented uh, all our patches for live migration and Macveta building um, on network. That's it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right then. Um, jumping ahead then to PRs, I went through those and didn't see any from the last week that were idle. So I logged that. We do have, um, I found looks like three bugs that we might be able to open up and um, drop some comments on just in case they are idle. So I have not responded to any of them yet, but starting with the first one. So uh, can you, labels. Sorry, annotation. okay. It's, can you see this one coming up on my screen? Or yes. Still, yes okay. So make sure I'm sharing the full window. Okay. Yep. All right, so how to pass labels annotations and to install strategy of bookshops. Do we have, I'm trying to think if, I'm getting Helm charts mixed up in my head, which are not related. Okay. Um, do we have any like global labels? I don't think so, because we're installing mostly directly from manifests. So actually, I, I think I talked to this person on Slack, and there's a okay. Slack thread about this. Um, 
And essentially, when they're deploying KubeVirt, uh, there's like a job that gets created where uh, the install strategy is, is generated. And then, uh, you know, that's basically a config map, if, if I remember right. And then that config map is used to actually deploy uh, KubeVirt. And during that job, it, it's failing. Um, it's looking for some um, Prometheus namespaces. And, and there's basically two hard-coded ones. There's the, the OpenShift monitoring, which is, is obviously for OpenShift. And then there's a monitoring, which is for vanilla Kubernetes. And um, you know, this error looks like it just can't reach the control plane for some reason. And I, I don't know why, so. Okay, so this might have something to do with their specific deployment. Uh, that's that's my guess. So I but I couldn't help them much further than that. So <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, I think with these two we can disable the or basically we can disable these two pair namespace. So maybe it will help them to disable it for the for the kubeboot namespace. Otherwise, I think there are policies by default that you basically block any traffic. Um, so they would need to basically define some policies to enable the job to communicate with the Kubernetes API. I also went ahead and uh, put a link to the Slack discussion in the issue so that if yeah. anyone else comes along, they can go take a look at that discussion as well. There you rock. Thank you. Um, let me refresh my page and Are we done with this one? Should we head over to um, the next one? I'm dropping another question on that just real quick. Oh, okay. No problem. Um, Okay, might be redundant. I haven't read the conversation in Slack yet. Um, so jumping to next one, 9305. Set check failing, licensing issues. This one opened last week and is idle. Um, so it's the also test failing um does this need to be assigned or yeah um, please assign it to me i okay cool dealer yes gotcha D -H -I -L -L -E -R. got it thank you And then finally, looks like we have 9302. Ancillary containers do not take that, limit ranges. That's that's system. the one where I talked about in the PR. This yeah, is essentially the, ma the matching uh, issue. So sweet. Okay, cool. And that's linked. So good. And I am skimming through conversations just real quick to see if we have anything since last week that stands out. Um, why is my internet being slow today? That's not cool. Got updates to EDE testing stuff. We have 
um, Google some rev code message sent out. It looks like someone is interested in GSOC. So actually, it looks like they may be able to benefit from some of the uh, good first issue labels and such. They're expressing their interest. Yeah, I open a Slack thread. Uh, feel free to put issue there and uh, we can point people to those cool. issues. So I am dropping that mailing list conversation link there in the agenda notes. And otherwise, it looks like we're good in the community notes there. So that covers everything. I'm going to scroll back through, see if we missed anything or if anything was added late. I do not see anything. So it looks like that covers our full agenda for today. All right, then. In that case, I'm going to move to dismiss this after a dad joke. I will threaten you with my own dad jokes, but I am not a dad, so that could go kind of terribly. Um, anyone have any to volunteer? Ha ha ha, you're stuck with mine. Okay, then. So, um, why won't swords go out of style? It's kind of obvious. They will always be cutting edge technology. Well, that's pretty awesome. I thought you were going to say because they always look sharp. <laughs> All right, then. Um, in that case, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the meeting. Going once, going twice. Thank you all for joining. Um, Larry, thank you for your help covering my Zoom troubles. Um, thank you all for participation and we look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Sounds great. Have a great weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.